Welcome back, everybody. The History Guy here. This is part two of my playthrough uh, at the Battle of Chancellorsville as the Confederates in the legendary mode of Ultimate General Civil War. Uh, before I get into this, like a lot of people, I just want to express my sorrow and my um, sympathy and my prayers for all the folks involved in the, the, the terrible shooting down in Florida. Um, I, don't, I don't want this channel to get to be about politics, so please, uh, if you're going to make any comments about um, political things to do with all of this, there's plenty of forums for that. This channel doesn't have to be one of those. Um, I'll delete those if they get put on here. I don't want it to be about that, but uh, some of my dearest friends lost their daughter at Columbine, so I know all too well um, what families go through when this happens. And uh, the only thing I would say is what I do for a living is I travel around to schools and I do my best to keep this kind of thing from happening. And just keep your eyes open and show kindness and, and love people because you never know if they're going to be there tomorrow. And uh, just look for the acts of of heroism, the stories that will come out. There's already one about a teacher or a, a football coach who took bullets for kids, saved their lives. I already heard about another one, a teacher who unlocked a door, put kids inside, and then shut the door behind them and, and was shot right in front of the door. Um, anytime there's an act of unspeakable horror like this, uh, it reveals people of extraordinary character and you're going to hear those stories and those are the stories that need to be shared um so i don't want to talk anymore about that let's get back to something that's really un unimportant right now to me and that's a video game uh but that's all i really want to have to say about that right now back to the game um obviously picking right up where we left off at the end of episode one i'm just trying to hold on on this right flank and hope that he doesn't throw too much at me while I bring my flanking attack down, and I'm just going to try to just pin these guys together if I can. Uh, I'm just going to bring it down this way rather than head it toward where I know he's got a strong defense right here around the objective that I need to win the battle. Like I said in the first episode, uh, I don't believe I'm going to be able to push for a victory without heavy, heavy losses that would, that would basically make it a worthless victory. Uh, so unless the opportunity looks really juicy that I can do it, I'm probably not going to go for that. But instead, I'm going to try to keep my army intact and destroy pockets of him as best I can. And then I'll keep my eyes open for an opportunity if it presents itself. So in the meantime, it looks like Fife's going to probably break here. I'm going to try to keep my numbers favorable gang up where I can all right something going on down here okay here we go let's take these guys out I think I've got this unit of skirmishers isolated so a lot of pausing I'm gonna continue to happen here We've got a couple of brigades coming here, so i got to be cautious. Maybe I can get the Orphan Brigade to keep an eye on McQuaid. I'm going to pause for a second. I think I just caused that skirmisher unit to surrender. I did. Now there's a big unit, a thousand um, mounted infantry right here. So i got to be cautious with this, especially in the woods. It's always tough to use cavalry in the woods. They're not nearly as effective. But in the meantime, we're going to send these guys up. Let's see what's happening over here. Uh, just because there's basically two different battles going on, I've got to be extra cautious of this. Paper Collar Brigade's got a bit of an issue here. But it seems like they're doing okay at the moment. Yeah, 601 kills, 143 deaths. Uh, I don't like the Orphan Brigade being out in the open like this, but they're doing okay for themselves. 766 and only 18 deaths. Problem is they're just outnumbered. Uh, and they've got to face several fronts here. So I may have to break off some skirmishers from some of these units to help cover some of these areas. Now we got to get O'Hare's Ohio Outlaws back in there. 
where they're supposed to be. Like I said, lots and lots of pausing going to be happening here, so I'm going to take this pretty slow and micromanage. I don't do that often, probably not as often as I should. I'm going to bring some skirmishers around here. And let's take a look and see what's happening here. Okay, he's got a couple more units that I can try to destroy. Yep, oh, wrong way. Yeah, let's go that way. Okay. I'm gonna let Fife drop back for a second here. We'll let Hood's Texas Brigade take the lead. And then I'll bring Fife down here. Well, I'm trying my best to catch up to these mountain infantry, but they're they're playing hard to get. AP Hill was wounded. Alright, I believe I started this particular uh, episode down by about 6,500 men. Looks like I've closed that gap to about 4,500. So the casualties are shifting in my favor, but still I don't think I'm going to close that gap enough. What's going on down here? Oh, we've chased this guy to the edge of the map. problem is that basically takes my cavalry out of the action elsewhere. Alright, let's take these guns. Alright, pause again. Looks like I'm starting to run into some of his other infantry here. Did I finally? No, they're still going. And the problem is I can't catch up to them. So these other units are taking more casualties than they probably should. Okay, we're, we're pretty solid over here on the left part of this line. It's over on the right that I've got to be more concerned, but I think we're going to be okay here.
I stopped pursuing him long enough for him to get complacent, it looks like, and now I can hit him. Yeah, now he's going to run again. Darn it. I'm not going to be able to get this guy until we get him all the way in the corner of the map. Alright, so he's backed off on his attack over here. I'm going to pull the Orphan Brigade back so they're not getting shelled by artillery. These guys are getting hit by canister fire. I'm going to start shifting some more units this way, I think. Alright, let's pause for a second again. we got 11 minutes left in this phase of the battle. Um, he's down to just 3,000 more men than me now. I've only lost one gun, so that's at least one bit of good news in the midst of all this. Did we finally catch these guys? Alright, we're about to finally finish off this mountain infantry over here. Alright, we got a problem here for Hampton. I'm going to back them up. And then bring the Snakefoot Brigade up here. Boy, good day for them. 1,378 kills, only 151 deaths. Oh, finally. Alright, so it's going to let me finish it right here. Uh, he just got more reinforcements. So that's uh, definitely what I'm going to do, is finish right there. I probably could have pressed that, caused some more casualties, but uh, this gives me a chance to kind of get everybody reset. And obviously, I'm only down by, what, about 4,300 men at the moment, which is interesting. That means he's got less guns and less men now than he had. So I'm actually in a slightly better position than I was at the end of the last phase of the battle. So I've got to think through some things here. I'm going to step out for just a second, come right back, and see what I want to do. All right, let's get back at this. I, um, I'm going to try to condense my forces as much as I can, and then very deliberately and slowly move forward. As of right now, uh, I've got about a 2,400-man disadvantage. So I'm still going to try to keep everything concentrated to make the best use of those forces. Instead of getting into a bloodbath 
on the last day especially. Okay, here we go. Time out. Let's pause because we just got our first glimpse of what he's doing. Uh, I'm going to park right at the edge of these woods for now. And I know he's going to have a bunch up here and I'm not, not going to go that route. And these guys on this side, for the most part, I think I'm just going to hang tight right where I am. I get some of my guns down here into this open space. I'll protect them with my cavalry. Keep one eye out on what's happening over here. He's got this one unit in the uh, fortifications here. I might try to go after them at least. I'll just park at the edge of the woods. Do I not have any supplies over here. All my supplies are on the other side. problem here with Lane. I don't want him taking that canister fire for too long. Hopefully he can get a couple volleys into that battery and drive it off. So there's some artillery in here. My question, of course, is what else is in there? Is there infantry protecting it? And if so, am I getting myself into a mess by sending my cavalry in here? Got to be careful. I can't see. There is a there is a battery or a brigade right there. And if he starts pulling back and my cavalry gets dragged, they're going to be dragged right into his killing zone. I need to quickly destroy this battery and disengage. All right, get out, get out, get out, get out. They did their job.
All right, let's pause for a second here because I'm a little disorganized over here on this side. Look at the numbers. All right, good news. So uh, I've actually got almost a 4,000 man advantage now. This is where I gotta get cautious because I know he's gonna have that area stacked in there. If I can push him back, then great. Gavin. I'm not going to be able to take them out all the way. Get out of there. Right, I'm going to pause for just a second again because my advance is not real organized at the moment. That's awesome. I love when things pop up in the middle of a game. All right, looking at the numbers again. All right, we're up to uh, 3,800 man advantage right now, so that's good news. I like to see that continue, but I feel like the uh, the casualties are, are going to start mounting here. Let's move these guns up. This is where it's going to get really bloody, unfortunately. And I feel like maybe, maybe I'm just doing too much and I'm going to cost myself a bunch of casualties trying to win this thing. But I feel like I can do it with an hour and a half to go. I feel like I can do it. I just think it's going to be costly. It already is.
I gotta get over here and supply these guys. Right here is the real big mess. about a 3200 man advantage so the casualties are pretty even right now uh, I'm not gaining any ground as far as the numbers I'm taking out I'm going to have to press this because I'm going to get decimated by his artillery otherwise. So I'm violating the one thing I said up front, which was I wasn't going to risk losing large numbers of men in order to try and win the battle. And yet here I am because I'm right within sight of it and yet look at what he's got parked there. And I don't think I have enough on this side. Oh, Wheeler, my goodness. I gotta shift some more brigades that way. Dude, back off. Right, let's pause again. Oh, what a mess. This is exactly what I wanted to avoid. And he just got reinforcements. Of course he did. That's why I knew better than to do this. Uh, I let myself get sucked in. And now he's going to plug another 5,000 men. 7,000, I think. He got 7,000 reinforcements. Artillery up close, just brutal. He's got three star units parked right on the objective. A ton of artillery that's just lighting me up right now. 
I'd say probably three-fourths of all my casualties in this battle will have been in this last hour and a half. I'm gonna win. It's just gonna be bloody. And honestly, when this battle started and you saw how one-sided the numbers were, I didn't think in a million years I had any shot to win this battle. Ugh, the men I'm losing on this side. Long Street wounded. Alright. I'm going in. I can't stand here and get take get hit by this artillery like that any longer. Lots of people just got killed and wounded. My goodness. It's what the war was like. I feel like I just had my own Cold Harbor moment like Grant did. Just hurling men to their deaths. Alright, Wheeler, back out of there. My main goal there was to drive off the artillery. I did that. But oh, the cost. Hmm. So this battle's been a great example of, I think, what you have to do when you're vastly outnumbered. And that is, and that's what Lee did, it's what uh, Napoleon tried to do, it's what great generals throughout history have done, which is if you are, if you're outnumbered, try and find ways to close that gap by concentrating your force and hopefully, because of his larger force, you can isolate and destroy parts of it. That's how um, Sam Houston won the, the War for Texas Independence. He had a smaller force, a much smaller force, uh, and, and because of that he kept moving, kept moving, kept moving. And it caused Santa Ana to split his numbers uh, so that he could try and contain and box him in. And in the process, by dividing his army, he allowed Sam Houston to turn on one part of it, and he took Santa Ana and ended the war. Uh, so that's kind of what you have to do in these situations. But I won the battle. And that's really all that, all that it comes down to. Um, 
it, it's going to hurt for a while, I think, because uh, I didn't gain much in the way of numbers of guns here, obviously. Um, lots of promotions. Did lose a few generals in the process. Statistically, uh, this is going to be a mi little bit misleading, the 16,000, uh, only because, well, you know what? I think that does count everything because... No, I think I probably lost closer to twenty-five to thirty thousand. Well, I would say it's probably about twenty-five thousand, just because um, when you when you build up your numbers after the first day of a battle, that actually I think comes off of the number of infantry or number of casualties. So it's kind of misleading in that sense. But you can see I was outnumbered by twenty-five thousand men, and I managed to pull off the victory. So. Uh, much like the historic Chancellorsville, I'm very happy that my vastly outnumbered force was able to figure out a way to win that battle. Now, I know there's some things I could have done better, and as always, I welcome your your comments and your observations and your um, just anything you have to say about that. We now have to go right into the Battle of Salem Church, but I'm going to save that for another episode. Uh, I'll dive back into that one next time around. As always, thank you so much in advance for any of your input that you have on this. I welcome it. I learn from it. Hopefully, maybe along the way, you learn a thing or two from me as well. So thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.